Some time ago, a good friend of mine lost his job and started looking for a new one. When we talked, he told me, Greg, you have no idea how the job market has evolved. It's just crazy. They're just so demanding. You're supposed to know so many things and have experience with so many programs and apps. And then there's the testing, he said. Every single time I have to go through a battery of test hours on end answering questions just to get rejected once more. It's really soul crushing. Well, besides the fact that I don't appreciate my friend to be soul crushed, the real issue I want to address here are personality tests. How can I say this in a way everyone understands it? Oh yeah, stop it. Personality tests, seriously, they're worthless. They're not accurate. They're not telling you what you need to know. You're basically just wasting money and just like my friend, you're draining the life out of people who really need a job and have better things to do than to answer to your fetishism. Okay, that was a little aggressive right there, or like a little over the top, uh, apologies. But listen, seriously, what do you think you're measuring with those tests? All those personality profiles are based on Jung's archetypes, which are basically a century old and flawed. They fail to take into account one of the biggest influencer of behavior and decision-making, which is the environment, the context we're in. We act differently based on where we are, with whom we are, and the general context we're in. Meaning, we will act differently if we're hungry, sick, happy, stressed, with our colleagues, with our boss, with our children, with our partner, at home, on a sunny beach, at our desk, at our boss's desk, and a combination of all these and many more. If we don't take our context into account, all these profiles don't mean much. Now, just to make my point, it's enough to put a new manager in charge of a team to get a totally new dynamic. I'm 26 years old. 26, and you're my new boss. And see people be motivated or demotivated. Their personality profile won't have changed, but the situation they're in will have. It is that manager, the person who will be in charge of your new recruit, who will be the most important factor in whether or not the new guy or gal will be able to fit in, adapt and get up to speed. Put someone in place who knows how to get the best out of people and most newcomers will be successful. What are you gonna do? I'll put a bully, a self-centered, promotion-driven, ambitious asshole, or just someone who doesn't care. Give up! Just quit! And it won't work. The irony is that it is those who want the most to rise up in an organization who are the least adequate. Ambition is about oneself doing better. Being a leader is about the others doing better. It's about the organization, not about who gets the credits. That's where you should invest, in your manager, not in lengthy recruitment processes. Sure, it's important that the person you're about to hire has affinity with the product or services and the basic skill set necessary to do what is expected from them. If you have one bucket that holds two gallons and another bucket that holds five gallons, how many buckets do you have? Two? But that's pretty much it. Talking 15 minutes with someone is more than enough to figure that out. But the sad truth is that most managers have no idea how to be a manager. They became managers because they were good at whatever they were doing, or at least they convinced their bosses they were and got promoted. You don't know I'm good. I have good things that you don't know about. Yeah. And I'm gonna be something. And they just improvised or tried to copy how they got managed, which was most probably someone who got promoted just like them and had no clue either. But managing people is very different than just being good at whatever you're doing. So instead of developing those skills in managers, the burden of management gets thrown onto the shoulders of HR. Uh, human resources lady. Oh, oh no, it, it's actually, it's Pam. They have to hire the right people. It's their responsibility now. <laughs> Hello, Miss Lady. Now, I'm the manager doesn't fail at managing his people. No, it's the recruitment process which is to blame, which is, of course, absurd. I've never understood why the turnover rate of a team isn't part of the KPIs of a manager. Everyone knows that people join companies and leave managers. Some managers burn through team members as if they were $1 bills in a strip joint. And somehow, that doesn't raise a red flag. 
So the recruiter needs to protect him or herself against the blame game that is being played on higher echelons. And guess what? <laughs> a good place to hide is behind the tedious recruitment process with a lot of tests. I have only one question for Mr. Mellon in 27 parts. I get it, I understand. Sure, if anything goes wrong with the new hire, you can always show that Hey, all the tests were positive and you don't understand what went wrong. You followed all the right procedures, right? Sure, the hiring process is important and we can talk about that. But even before considering hiring someone, anyone, make sure that person will enter a company culture and a supportive yet demanding team and manager who knows what she or he is doing. And I'm referring to the manager here, not the new employee. Supportive yet demanding. I want you to rest well in a month from now this Hollywood Big Shot's gonna give you what you want. Or turn that around. Demanding yet supportive. You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? Regardless of personality traits, tests and other color and letter codes, these two words are the key to a successful hire. And yet neither are a reference to the person being hired. The only thing the new one needs to be able to do is being coachable. That's important. I know I'm not. That's been a problem my whole career. Ask anyone I worked for with a few exceptions. Hey, you know who you are. All my ex-bosses can testify I'm a worthless piece of junk. Not because I'm a worthless piece of junk, but I'm not coachable. I'm an autodidact. I do things my way. I'm telling you straight. It's my way or the highway. I have my own ideas and I'm strong-willed. I want to try things my way and that doesn't work well with bosses. PowerPoint is boring, but experience is the best teacher. It was great when you're your own boss and it has worked exceptionally well since I'm my own boss here. But before that, yeah, no, <laughs> you shouldn't have hired me, even though the tests were telling you otherwise. Anyway, the point is, don't hire on personality. It doesn't mean a thing. However, make sure the people you do hire have affinity with whatever they will be doing and that they are coachable. Don't do that through lengthy questionnaires, but qualitative interviews. And those people, put them in the right environment, surrounded by the right people, with the right skill sets, the right manager. Well, now you're talking. Did I mention we have a course on leadership? And a pretty good one that is. Entrepreneur.com featured it as one of the top 10 online courses to make you a better leader. It's called The Science of Leadership. It's a bestseller on Udemy as well, and The Economist promotes it to its readers. So I'll be leaving some links below. Hey, just saying. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe. We have new episodes of this vlog coming out every week. Check out some of our other episodes. And if you want the real stuff, go to brainacademy.com. Join our 250,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen your